My name is Angel. I've been in this small town for as long as I can remember. I don't think I could ever leave it. I love the people here. They always seem so happy. Well, almost always. This is Amanda Elliott. I met her last year on Christmas Eve. As you can see, Amanda was very sad. All her life, Amanda has loved Christmas. It was her very favorite time of the whole year. But last Christmas, something was wrong. She didn't know why, but for the very first time in her whole life, I just don't have the Christmas spirit. <gasps> no Christmas spirit? What's wrong with you? You know what this means, right? It means you've lost Christmas and you never get it back. As I said, Amanda was very sad, and I knew something had to be done. I guess Rachel was right. I really have lost Christmas. Lost Christmas? Amanda, you can't be serious. Who are you and how do you know my name? Well, it's a pretty small town. I mean, everyone knows everyone here. Anyways, I'm Angel. It's nice to meet you, Amanda. Nice to meet you too, Angel. Now, what's this I hear about losing Christmas? Well, that's what Rachel says, and she must be right. I can't feel the Christmas spirit anymore. Oh, uh, the Christmas spirit. I see. We talked for a while, and I told her all about the real meaning of Christmas. Christmas isn't about giving presents at all. What? It's not about giving presents? I mean, that's like the most important thing. Now, I know it seems that way, and heaven knows a lot of people have made it that way. But the real Christmas, the true Christmas, is actually about receiving a gift. Just one gift. It's the most important gift that anyone could ever receive. Oh, you mean Jesus. Jesus was a gift. He's a gift from God. And he's not just a gift for people who love him. He's a gift for all people, all over the world. I told Amanda how important it is for us to give to others, even people who don't know us, or even like us. Not presents you can buy in a store, but giving them our time, our attention, and our friendship. Loving them the way God loves us and sharing Jesus with them. It was as if a light was switched on. She suddenly realized that Christmas is about receiving the gift of Jesus and sharing that gift with others. Once Amanda understood what Christmas is really all about, she became filled with energy and excitement. The very next day was Christmas Day, but it wasn't like any Christmas Amanda and her family had ever had before. They did open presents, but all Amanda really wanted to do was to get to church and help serve a Christmas meal to the poor and homeless. It was something they'd never done before, but Amanda and her family and friends all had a great time. For the first time in her life, Amanda was truly starting to feel what the true Christmas spirit was all about. And her friends were learning it too. When spring came, they did a lot of fun things. They met a lot of great people and really made a difference in the lives of others.
But not everyone was having such a good time, like Amanda's cousin Brian. Anything new on the McAllister case? We don't have anything yet. Not today, Powell. Just doing my job, Sergeant. Let me take you home. We convinced the store owners to drop the charges again. You know, if your mom was here, you can't keep going like this. Things have got to change. Brian had stayed with Amanda's family for a while before, but this time, his father sent him to live with them indefinitely. In our conversation that Christmas Eve, I had told Amanda that we need to be friendly to the lonely. Once she started looking, she found them everywhere. This is my sister Susie, and these are our friends, Rachel, Carl, and Jane. What's your name? Bethany. Well, hi, Bethany. Are you here by yourself? Do you want to come play with us? Yeah, we can do this on board to pirate ship. And you can be the captain. Yeah. Oh, ready to set sail for the high seas, Captain. Ahoy, ladies, let's jump off. <laughs> It's not really hard to make someone's day, like Mrs. Wilson, the one Amanda used to call Old Lady Wilson. She's actually a pretty sweet lady when you get to know her. After her husband died, she became kind of a recluse. She hardly ever left her house. But Amanda was determined to change that. Amanda noticed that her yard needed work. So... Amanda, her sister Susie, and their friends spent a lot of time with Mrs. Wilson. Sometimes it was hard work. But Mrs. Wilson's homemade lemonade was a big hit. Sadly, Brian hadn't learned anything. He just went right on making bad decisions.
Good morning. Happy Easter. Thank you. It's a wonderful sermon. Thank you. Good morning. Happy Easter, Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you. Good Happy to see you. Easter. How Good are you? Morning. Doing, well. How are Doing you? fine. Thank you. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you. Happy Easter, Rick. Well, Paul, Amy, how's the Elliott family this morning? Doing well. Thank you. Good. Good. And who is this? This is our new friend, Bethany. Well, hello, Bethany. It's so good to have you with us this morning. <laughs> Thank you for letting me come. Oh, it's our pleasure to have you. You come back anytime. Rick, the sermon was wonderful this morning. Thank you. Well, thank you, Amy. I appreciate that. You and the choir did such a beautiful job with the cantata to go with it. Well, thank you. We enjoyed it. And Amanda and Susie, y'all did a terrific job with the scripture lessons this morning. It was fun. You better watch out. She might be after your job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Paul, how's your nephew Brian doing? He's still finding his way, you know? Well, he certainly in our prayers will continue to be. If there's anything we can do, please let Belinda or me know. Thank you. And Amy, let's get together and have lunch sometime. That sounds great, Belinda. We will. Happy Easter. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter to y'all, too. Oh man, I'm so sorry. You all right? You know how kids are these days. Yeah, I know. You good? Come on, Grandpa. What's that matter? Happy Easter. Like taking candy from an old guy. Wow, this guy was loaded. Awesome. Check it out. You did all right, Brian. If your family could see you now. They'd have a heart attack. I don't know how you got stuck living with those weirdos anyway. Well, you know how it is, Remo. My dad said I was hanging with a bad crowd, so he just sent me to live with my uncle and his family. They're a bunch of Bible thumpers, so he figured they straightened me out. Your dad hasn't seen a bad crowd yet. Scarlet, for once I agree with you. Isn't this my lucky day? Hey, you should save some of that money for the rest of the guys. What money? And thank you, Lord, for all that you have given us. Help us to use these gifts for your glory. And Lord, please keep an eye on Brian. I think he needs you really bad. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Good night, girls. Good night, Mom. Good night. Good night, Amanda. Sleep well. Susie? Yeah? What's up? Why do you think Brian is such a... a... a jerk? Yeah. <sighs> well, I don't know. Ever since he came to live with us, he's been a real pain. Maybe... Maybe he does it for the attention. That's really sad. Yeah. It really is. We'll keep praying for him, okay? Okay.
hi. Huh? Would you like a drink and a sandwich? Uh, you don't have to do that. Jesus fed the multitude with fishes and loaves. The least that I can do for you is give you a drink and a sandwich. Well, since you put it like that. Thank you, darling. I'm Amanda. It's nice to meet you, Amanda. I'm Jeremiah. What does a kid your age know about Jesus? Well, he died on the cross for our sins. Do you have any more of that Waldorf salad? Oh, it was so... Hey, Mom. Jeremiah, this is my mom and dad, my sister Susie, and Miss Wilson, our neighbor. I didn't mean to bother you guys, but I, I want to return Amanda to her family. Uh, you have a good day. Bye, Jeremiah. Nice meeting you, Amanda. I'll think about what you said. You went off to talk to some homeless man? He's not homeless. He just likes to spend time at the park. Well, he seemed nice enough to me. What? It was August when Amanda and Susie's mom and dad got the big news. Two weeks! A cruise for two people, not four. And they were leaving the day after Thanksgiving, which is the official start of the Christmas season, Amanda's favorite time of the whole year. Her parents were going to be gone for two weeks, nearly the whole Christmas season. That was bad enough. But Amanda and Susie knew they would be stuck with Brian the whole time. Since he was the oldest, they were sure their parents would leave him in charge. They just knew it was going to be a rotten, terrible, awful two weeks. But then, God changed everything. God sent their Aunt Mel to stay with them while their parents were gone. Aunt Mel is a lot of fun, but she doesn't put up with any of Brian's attitude, and he knows it. Which only makes the girls love her even more. But then it was the day after Thanksgiving. And before they knew it, their mom and dad were gone. Okay, kids, what do we do today? Shopping. Okay, great. For real? Get your coats. Thanks. Oh, yeah.
Hey. Get your coat. What? We're going shopping. I'm staying here. <laughs> Not an option. I'm in my pajamas. Well, that was your choice, Brian. It's almost noon. You should be dressed by now. Forget it. There's no way I'm going out <laughs> of my. Oh. No. Come on. We're gonna go in here and look for some wrapping paper and stuff. Okay, sure. I'll take flannel boy here down to the thrift store and see if I can find him something to wear. Meet us at the soda shop for lunch. My treat. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, see you there. Yeah, we're open. Why, well, why wouldn't we be? Yeah, 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 okay, okay. Excuse me, sir. My sister and I are looking for the real Christmas wrapping paper. What are you talking about? You know, the Christian stuff, like baby Jesus and the wise men. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Everything I got is over there in the basket. Well, is there any other store that you know of that might have it? I'm not in the habit of sending business to my competition. Thank you. Um, have a Merry Christmas. Yeah, yeah. What's this? This is what we'll use to make our own Christmas wrapping paper. Oh, that's awesome. So just cut it into sheets and do your thing. Thank, Thank you. you. you guys those are amazing and we made enough to give some to the guys too do we have any more of that paper I want to make some for Miss Wilson we'll go get lots more tomorrow okay deal deal man it's cold you think it's cold now wait until January Going somewhere, dude? Huh? The hard point. You're not going anywhere. You one of them homeless men that they use my tax dollars to pay for. Come on, Remo. You don't pay no taxes. Shut up. Your focus is over here. I'm not homeless. I I can't. I, 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 I. You're about to get a beating. Teach him a lesson, Remo. That's enough! Look, lady, nobody invited you. I've got my invitation right here. Detective Sergeant Carpenter, Blue Rock PD. Blue Rock? Isn't that like 100 miles from here? Did you get lost or something? Officer, we're just having a little fun. So, if you would, get you and your little kitty out of here. Because it would be a shame for something to- Oh, oh God! You break him arm! Are you having fun now? Listen up. You see that boy right there? <laughs> if I ever see you near him again, you belong to me. Got it? Now get out of here. Hey, 
We need to talk. We'll be at the soda shop. Bye, Brian. I don't understand, Brian. What's going on with you? Nothing. Nothing? You were ready to beat that man up. For what? For nothing? Do you realize what happened back there? The second you pulled that man off the street and held him in that alley, you were all guilty of kidnapping. You and your whole pathetic gang should be sitting in a jail cell right now just waiting to be sent to prison. Prison, Brian! Have you heard stories about what a great place prison is? I just saved your butt. Well, no one asked you to. Well, of course no one asked me to! Don't you get it? That means something. Nobody asked Jesus to die on a cross for you either. But he did it. Don't you realize why? It's about time you started appreciating everything that's being done for you. You'd better wake up and start using your brain before it's too late. This is our friend, Jeremiah. Hi, Jeremiah. Are you sure you're okay? Yes, yes ma'am. I'm, I'm fine. Good. So, Jeremiah, do you live on the streets? No, no ma'am. Oh, uh, officer. You can call me Mel. Mel? Uh, you, you don't look like a Mel. <laughs> well, that's a relief. Mm -hmm. My name is Melody. People just call me Mel. Oh, Melody. Uh, that's a good name. Uh, like a song. Yeah, like a song. Amanda tells me you spend a lot of time on the streets and in the park. Yes, it's... It's peaceful. M most of the time. But you do have a home, right? Yes, the... Uh, other side of the library. He does have a home. It's really nice, but he hardly ever spends time in it. Oh. I like to go to the park. I like to walk, sit, and be out in the open air. And listen to, to the music. What music? There's music everywhere. Everything makes music. Um, you have to listen close. My, my wife and I used to go to the park and she would, she would sing. She, she was always singing, always. Nowadays, I, I go to those places. And I, if I listen close, I, I can still hear her singing. How long ago did you lose your wife, Jeremiah? I don't know. Yesterday, a week ago, a million years, I have no idea when she left this world, time stopped. Come on, Jeremiah, we'll take you home. You're my sister. I'm sure whatever you bring me will be awesome. Oh, wow, that sounds amazing. I wish I could be there.
Well, I would bring the kids with me. And probably Mrs. Wilson, too. She's really becoming part of the family, you know? In fact, she's coming for supper tonight. Oh, and I met their friend Jeremiah. He's a little... sad. I probably should have invited him, too. Yep, making my famous pot roast and canned veggies. I know, but I add a secret ingredient to the veggies. No, it's not love, silly. It's sugar. It helps get rid of the metallic taste from the can. <sighs> Quit worrying, Amy. The kids are great. Well, your kids are great. Brian is being his usual self. No, nothing I can't handle. I just... I really hope he straightens up soon, you know? I'm not gonna tase him. <laughs> oh, well, they would really love to talk to you. They miss you guys, but they're not here right now. They went to town with their friends. I'll tell them to call you. Oh, wow, that is expensive. I'll just tell them you called. <laughs> okay, we'll have a great time. The girls and I will just be hanging out, watching movies and drinking wine. <laughs> kidding, Amy! Come on, kidding! <laughs> okay. Love you too. Bye. <sighs> you taste one kid. Pot roast, yum. I love pot roast. Me too. Me three. Sorry guys, Aunt Ma said you couldn't come over for dinner tonight. Maybe next time. Mm -hmm. But we'll save you some if there's any leftovers. Okay? Okay. okay. Yeah. Hey look, there's Bethany. Hey, Bethany. Hey. hey guys. Hi. What you doing? We're gonna go see if they've started putting up the town nativity set yet. You wanna come? Okay. Cool. Let's, Let's go. go. I don't understand. Where's the nativity? The town's not putting it up this year. What? Yeah, the nativity. The, the town's just not putting it up this year. Why? A citizen filed a complaint about having a religious structure on town property. You know, the whole separation of church and state thing. Had a lawyer and everything. The town just didn't have a choice. So they're not putting it up this year. It's not right. It's just not right. Amanda! Amanda, are you okay? It's not right. It's Christmas, Christ's birthday, not Santa's. What's wrong with people? I don't know, kiddo. I don't know. I don't understand. Why would anybody complain about a nativity at Christmas? Well, honey, not everyone believes what we believe. I know that, and I pray for them all the time. But why is what they believe in more important than what we believe in? That's a very good question. What do you believe, Amanda? I believe in God. I believe in what the Bible says, so I believe in Jesus. An angel told me- Here we go. Angel told me that as long as I believe in him and trust in him, that me and God will be like this. You're a moron. Some woman who doesn't exist told you a fairy tale about somebody else who doesn't exist, and you believe it. They do exist! Angel is real! God, Jesus, they're all real! Amanda, sit! Honey, I know it's hard for you to understand. Well, it's but hard for me to understand, too. She's absolutely right. Why should people who don't believe in something get to impose their will on people that do? Why do you get to force anybody else to do what you want? Seriously? 
After that little stunt you and your buddies pulled the other night? I don't think a simple nativity scene is forcing anybody to do anything. They're still free to believe what they want to and practice what they believe. Well, the very first amendment to the Constitution says that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. But it sure feels like the free exercise of our religious beliefs is getting prohibited all the time. Look, all I know is that people are really forgetting who Christmas is all about. Well, what are you going to do about it? Me? What can I do? Come on, Amanda. You're an Elliot. What would your mom and dad do? They'd stand up and fight for what they believe in. Exactly. Fight? Fight who? City Hall, that's who. The whole town, if necessary. I love a good fight. <laughs> oh, for a righteous cause, of course. <laughs> no, of course. <laughs> okay, then. Let's fight. Yeah. Yeah. Count me out. Oh, you poop. So what happened to your hand? Let's just say I am a little clumsy when it comes to moving furniture by myself. <laughs> so you're here about the nativity scene. That's right, Mr. Mayor. Please, detective, call me Bob. <laughs> Please, Bob, call me Melody. So what happened to the nativity? Well, uh, Please, Bob, call me Amanda. <laughs> well, Amanda, we've had a lot of complaints about it. You had one complaint. Yes. Well, in light of that one complaint and the potential legal ramifications of failure to address the complaint, we really had no choice but to fold like a cheap suit. Uh, your, your mother certainly is a feisty one. I'm not her mother. She's our neighbor, Mrs. Wilson. Please, Bob, call me Mrs. Wilson. <laughs> okay, Bob, what will it take to get the nativity put back up on the town square? I wish it were that simple. I really do. But if I were to put the nativity back up, the town could be sued by some pretty powerful groups. Well, the town has lawyers, doesn't it? Yes, well... Well, why don't you fight? I'm afraid it's just not that easy. It's not going to be easy, but it's the right thing to do. Christmas is Jesus' birthday. And I've been all around this town, and I haven't seen Jesus anywhere. He's not in the decorations. He's not in the stores. The one thing that was all about Jesus was the nativity, and now that's gone. And we want it back. Come on, girls. We should go. Mayor Pearson has more important things to worry about. Like whether the vote of the one person who complained is enough to get him reelected. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. So you're going up against City Hall, eh? We're not going up against anybody. Oh, yes, we are. No, we're not. We're not against anyone. We're just standing up for our rights. Right, right. Freedom of religion, blah, blah. That's right, Buster. It's in the Constitution. We have the right to the free exercise of our religion. What's wrong with having Christ in Christmas? Wrong? There's nothing wrong with it, Amanda. So then, what's the problem? The problem, as the town sees it, is that the town government represents all citizens, not just the Christian ones. The law says the government can't support one religion over any other. That's not what the Constitution says. It says that Congress cannot establish a national religion. Everything else is left up to the states to decide. What? I taught American history for 25 years. I ought to know. Whatever the case, according to you, Mr. Henry. Henry, the town can't support one religion over another, but that doesn't mean it can't support all religions, does it? I mean, why can't they have Christmas displays for Christmas and Hanukkah displays for Hanukkah and... Pagan displays for pagan holidays, Satanist displays for satanic holidays. You see the problem, right? Yes, fine. I see the problem. What's the solution? That's not the question for me. For me, the question is, what is there about it that's newsworthy? I need a story. 
an angle, something that grabs the public's attention. Christ is being left out of his own birthday. Isn't that a story? It would be for me, but for the general public, no. It's got to have something more. It's got to have... A fight. Come on, we've danced all around and it's time to admit it. If we want general public opinion on our side, then we're going to have to stand up for what we believe in and fight. Yeah, totally. If you can stir up enough people to go up against City Hall, well, then a fight like that certainly would be newsworthy. But fight how? The good old-fashioned way. Henry, get your presses warmed up and ready to go. We don't really have presses anymore. It's all digital these days. Whatever. Get your computers booted up. And find a good photographer. For what? You'll know it when it happens. Come on, girls. We've got an arts and crafts project to do. All right. Heather, I need a shooter on standby. See if you can get Jessica Powell. And tell Red we may have something big brewing. I don't know, but it sounds like fun. Arts and crafts? Bring back Jesus! 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 Great! Just what we don't need. Or maybe just what we do. You should be over there with them. <laughs> it looks like they're doing pretty well without me. I have lived in this town almost all of my life, and a lot of you have too. I remember when we used to have sleigh rides and carolers, and there was a big, bright, beautiful star that hung over that building and would shine down on the nativity scene. But you walk around this town today, and what do you see? You see Santa Claus. He's everywhere, and elves and penguins. But the nativity? Star, the wise men, all gone. Any reference to Jesus is gone. It just breaks my heart. Do you even know who Santa is? He's Saint Nicholas, a saint. Do you know what that means? That means he serves God, not man. Jesus was born nearly 300 years before Saint Nicholas. Now, whose birthday should we be celebrating? Jesus! So where's all the Jesus stuff? And the wise men. And the manger. And the shepherds. And the star. And where's the baby Jesus? How do you think God feels that this town's forgetting about his son's birthday? Can I have a sign? Sure you can, Caroline. Let's get our nativity back. Yeah! yeah. Bring back Jesus! Bring back Jesus! Bring back Jesus! Bring back Jesus! So, uh, you're stirring up a little trouble, eh? Always. <laughs> so, what brings you down from the ivory tower, Bob? Melody, this is Samantha, my executive assistant. Melody is the sister of Amy Elliott. You remember who she is, don't you? Of course, Mr. Mayor. I guess we know it's going to be on the front page of the Gazette tomorrow. <laughs> Come on, Bob. This is the 21st century. Nobody reads newspapers anymore. But it'll be the top story on the Gazette's website in less than an hour. With video, most likely. Really? I, I don't see any news crews anywhere. <laughs> wow, you are old school, aren't you? Uh, see that woman taking pictures? That camera she's using shoots video, too, and sound. Seriously? Yeah, and that little black box on top? That's a Wi-Fi streaming device. With that, she can stream video and sound live straight to the Gazette's website. Pearson, what are you going to do about this? Mr. Crowder, if you want to see the Morning, mayor... Morning, Ted. Then... 
Uh, Melody, this is Ted Crowder. He's one of our friendly town merchants and member of the town council. Ted, this is Melody Carpenter. You're gonna let these holy rollers jam up the streets like this? I mean, who's running this town anyway? Why, the people are running the town, Ted, the same as they always have. Well, when the burning and looting starts, it's going to be your head. Cheerful old cuss, ain't he? Um, he sure is determined. Look, I think there's a way we can get the nativity back. So according to Bob, all we have to do is find someone who owns property in town who will let us put the nativity on it. And then the law can't touch us. Do we know anyone? I mean, we live outside the town. How are we going to find someone who lives in town? Well. Oh, hi, hey. Jeremiah. Welcome to the Emily Carson Memorial Amphitheater. Wow. I've passed this place all the time, but I never knew that you owned it. I sure do. My wife Emily and I built it. We wanted to have band concerts here and singers and stuff. But she, well, not a single song has ever been performed here. That's so sad. It's such a beautiful spot. Are you sure you want to let us set the nativity up here? I mean, it has such a special meaning to you. Emily sung in the church choir. She was as Christian a woman that you could find. I'm sure she'd be very proud and humble to know that we put Christ's manger here. Jeremiah, thank you. It's just... This is the nativity? I know, right? I thought it would look more like less work. Oh, come on, girls. So what if it takes a little work? You're young, so what? Besides, it can't be that hard, right? What are you looking for? Instructions. Unless you know how this is all supposed to go together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, not at all. Well, it really can't be that hard, can it? Well, obviously this box-shaped piece is the base. Obviously. Of course. <laughs> anyway, we'll take that piece and we'll put it over there in the grass. And then we'll move these other pieces too and Mrs. Wilson and I will sort them by size while you girls sort the hardware, you know, screws together, bolts together, and so on. For now, we'll leave the figurines where they are. Well, then what? Then we figure out how to put it all together. <laughs> Once we've got that figured out, we'll take pictures so we know how it all goes together. And then we'll take it apart so we can reassemble it in Jeremiah's park tomorrow. Sounds like a plan. guys. Hey. Where have you guys been? We've been working so hard. Yeah, we saw. That's why we were waiting over there until y'all were finished. Oh, that's my ride. Gotta go. Have fun. Where's she going? She's just got a volleyball game today. Yeah. Now, you guys go help Aunt Mel and Miss Wilson. I'm on break. I'm gonna have to start hanging out with y'all guys. Hey folks. Oh. Need a hand? Well, if it isn't the mayor. I thought the town couldn't be associated with putting this together. That's true, but I took the rest of the afternoon off, so now I'm just like any other citizen looking to help. So do you have a hammer for me? No hammers, Bob. 
they use screws and bolts, not nails. But you can help us figure out how all of this is supposed to go together. Yeah, whatever you need. What's old Ted Crowder going to say if he sees you helping to build this nativity? He'll be rolling over in his grave, I'm sure. <laughs> He's not dead, Bob. <laughs> how can you tell? No. I'm going to go get some work gloves out of my car and let's see if we can raise the roof, huh? Oh, stop drooling. We don't have a mop, you know. <laughs> I'm serious. You have got to do something about this. No, it's that carpenter woman. She's behind the whole thing. I just know it. And why does she even care? She's not even from around here. Oh, and she's got Bob eating right out of her hand. It's nauseating. I don't know, Henry, but you better stay on top of this mess. Okay, that's it. Hold it right there until I can get all the screws in. Whatever you say, boss. <laughs> Are you doing with that? I think the mirror has a few screws loose too. <laughs> You're funny, Aaron. Hey, Mr. Mayor. Would you like to tell us why you're helping to build a nativity that the town was recently ordered to stop being displayed? Jessica Powell. I didn't you used to wear glasses. Didn't you used to answer questions? <laughs> okay, that's got it. It's a very nice camera you got there. Hope you're getting my good side. Are we live on the World Wide Web? Uh, you're avoiding the question live on the World Wide Web. Okay. Jessica, this land belongs to the church, not the town. And the church has every right to display a creche on their property. Now tomorrow, this entire structure will be moved to a piece of property in town, private property. And the owner of that property has every right to display it there. Now, as a public servant, I'm just doing anything I can to help move the process along. But the creche is owned by the town. What about the separation between church and state? Well, I, uh... The town doesn't own the creche anymore. It doesn't? No, it belongs to me now. Since the town can't display it, it was of no use to them, so I bought it this morning. At Mr. Mayor, here is your payment in full. Well, thank you, Miss Carpenter. It's a pleasure doing business with you. Believe me, the pleasure is all mine. You mean you sold an entire custom-made creche for one dollar? Hey, look, we had to do something with this offensive thing, and Melody was the highest bidder. So, if you excuse me, I think I'm going to take this down to the town treasurer. So, I suppose you voted for Mayor Pearson. I don't live here. Man, what are we doing here? Chill out, Thorn. Oh, they're just setting up their stupid little Christmas display. But I ain't up going up against no cop. You need to get a grip. Hey, don't sweat at me. It's just a bad idea. I mean, you've seen the way she hey. keeps Remo's. Listen, you don't need to worry about that cop, okay? You need to worry about me. You got it? Scarlet. I think it's time we take these weirdos down a notch. The cop, too. Take the guys. Meet me at the cemetery. We got plans to make. Let's go. Not you. Wow, great job, everyone. When we add the star tomorrow in the park, it'll be perfect. Wow, it looks amazing. Do you think the baby Jesus needs to be propped up more? Oh, I think he looks fine, Susie. Whew, that sure is a lot of hard work. <laughs> yeah, but it was worth it. Can we go and get some hot cocoa now? 
Of course we can. In the church kitchen, my treat. Okay, kids, off to the kitchen. Yeah. Hello? Samantha. Uh, calm down. Tell Ted I'll be right there. I'm sorry, duty calls. <laughs> Another time, maybe? It's a date. <sighs> I thought we got rid of that stupid thing. That nativity. Now it's sitting over there, smack dab in the middle of town, and you helped them put it there. What were you thinking? Look, Ted. I know your roots go deep in this town, but it doesn't belong to you. Your family deeded over the property for the town to be built long before you were even born. I don't care. You've gone too far this time, Bob. I'm fixing to call an emergency meeting of the town council and have you thrown out of office over this. And I'll be there with my lawyers. Bob, this is serious. We've got to do something. Like what? They do look mighty friendly. You think there's a story here? Okay, run with it. See what you can find out. No, he's all over town all the time. Find the carpenter woman and follow her. She's directly connected to the nativity, which is a running story already thanks to that protest you covered. Snoop around the Elliott house. See what you can find out about her. Maybe one of the kids will give you a lead. Keep me posted. Hi. Hey there. Hope I'm not too late. Nope, right on time. Come on in. You look wonderful. Thanks. Hi, kids. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Hi. I hope she's not going to call me Mr. Mayor all evening. She'll warm up to you. Can I take your coat? Sure. Thanks. Well, hello again. Mrs. Wilson, it's always a pleasure to see you. Uh-huh. You were a big help today, Bob. And if Mel likes you, then I guess you're all right. Thank you, Mrs. Wilson. You know, I just got to say, even though I represent the town on a personal level, I really do appreciate and support everything you're trying to do. You always talk like a politician. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I guess I do. I'm sorry about that. Well, that's all right, but I'm still not voting for you. And why not? Because I don't live inside the town limits. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just have to see about getting this area annexed. Oh, no, 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 don't you dare. You ready to eat? Absolutely. What? What's the matter? Right. Samantha's not calling this time. It's Jessica. You wanted updates? I followed the carpenter woman to the Elliott house. And now the mayor is here. They appear to be having dinner together. I've got it all on video. Do you want me to bring it to you? No, no, no. You stay there and see what develops. And get as much video as you can. Pearson leaves, follow him. But don't let anybody see you, do you understand? It's getting chilly. I can't stay here all night. For what I'm paying you, you do what I tell you. Yes, sir, but... What a jerk. It's me. Shut up and listen. It's time.
Remo should be here soon. So, what's your story? My story? Yeah. Like, you and Remo know all about me, my history, my family. So what about you? You don't want to know about me. Look, we all have bad times in our life. A bad time? You think you've had a bad time? You're an idiot. Okay, okay. Get it. Oh, poor Brian. Raising a good home from a respectable family? You don't know what it's like to have real problems, do you? You've never had a home life so twisted, so intense, that the only way that you can deal with it is to cut yourself. Cut yourself? Scarlet, I- Shut up. I don't need your sympathy. You had the life, Brian. So what? Daddy made you follow some rules and help out around the house? Well, boo-hoo. I bet your mama makes you pancakes every morning with smiley faces, doesn't she? My mom is dead. Well, I wish mine was. My parents hated me from day one. Do you know what they named me? Magdalene. So what did the kids at school call me? Maggot. And nobody wanted to be friends with Maggot. I tried, man. I tried like hell. All I wanted was to have friends, to have a family, and to be accepted. It was like the more I tried, the more they ripped me apart. And I bled. Oh, I bled. I bled for everybody. But who bled for me, huh? Nobody. Nobody ever bled for me. So I thought, if I couldn't make them like me, then they would fear me. But things at home just got worse and worse. So I left. I changed my name to Scarlet, and I never went back. I lived on the streets any way that I could, and I fought for everything I had. And then Remo found me. He gave me a family I could count on, a family I could trust, a family full of broken losers, just like me. And I've been here ever since, in the gutter, with the rest of the rats. Scarlet. Hey. You can take care of that later. Nice jacket. Yeah, that's what the guy that was wearing it thought. Amanda, how was your day? Okay, I guess. Mm, you had a bad day? No, I just had the worst time making myself understood today. What do you mean? Haha, <laughs> 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 very funny. Don't sweat it, Amanda. It happens to all of us. Sometimes, no matter what we say or what we do, some people just aren't getting the message, you know? Don't worry, I'm sure tomorrow things will be better. Thank you, Mrs. Wilson. I was talking to Amanda. Your case is hopeless. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling I'm missing something here? You're missing dessert. Hot apple pie made fresh by some pie-making conglomerate in Timbuktu. Well, that sounds perfect. Do you happen to have any corporation-made vanilla ice cream you could scoop on there for me? <laughs> you know we do. I'll get it. Hey, that could be your folks calling. Yeah, I'll get it. You know, they miss their mom and dad so much. Well, of course they do. But you're doing a fine job with the melody. And you'll make a great mother yourself someday. Yeah. Someday. I can't believe how warm it is today. We may never have fall. We'll just go right into winter. I know, right? The high is supposed to be almost 80 today. Ugh. It's weird. It just doesn't feel like Christmas. So we have to take the whole stable apart? 
No, it should come off in sections. If we take out the four screws and remove the roof as one piece, then the three walls should just come off. That should be it. That sounds easy. But I wish Susie was here to help. I know, honey, but she's had this overnight class field trip planned for months. It wouldn't be fair to make her miss it. Besides, all the kids are helping, so we'll be fine. By the time she gets back tomorrow, the nativity will be all set up in Jeremiah's Park. So what time is the truck coming to haul it all over there? Well, Bud Clark said he'd try to bring the truck around. Oh no. Where did it go? I don't know, honey. Hello? What? This is amazing. Look at all these people. How did this happen? The flower stars are pretty. I love the pink ones. Well, I guess you kids really did have a, an influence on this town after all. We did? You sure did. I bet Bob had a hand in this, didn't he? No, he's as surprised as I am, but he's glad. Is he here? No, he's got meetings all day. He'll come by later. But he did ask me to give you this. What is it? It's a job offer. <laughs> A job offer. Look, it's as clear as Christmas. You two like each other. So you may as well move here and get on with it. What about the town's non-fraternization policy? <laughs> you two will figure that out. Well, if the mayor didn't have the nativity moved here, then who did? I have no idea. I know that Jessica Powell did a series of reports on the Gazette's website about the children's mission yesterday. And today, this. It's a miracle. So this is the way Pearson wants to play it, huh? Well, that's okay with me. But the mayor did. I don't want to hear it. You tell Pearson my lawyers will have him up before a judge by the end of the week. Boo! Ted, the mayor knew you would say that, so he gave me a message to give to you. Bring it on! Yay! Way to go. Boy, that felt good. Now you know why I like a good fight. <laughs> I still don't understand how this happened. It's like the girl said, it's a miracle. Just look around at everything. Look at all these people. How could any of this even exist? It's all a miracle. How did this happen? Didn't you hear? It's a miracle. It wasn't a miracle. Well, of course it wasn't. We did it. Brian and I moved the nativity here during the night. What? Why? Because we're done. We're done with you and all your garbage. That's right. You think you're done with me? Mm -hmm. You think you're done with me? <laughs> you think you're done with me, huh? Are you ready to tangle with me now? That was assault and battery. And I'm just sure we can find something else to charge you with. You don't have the authority. Oh, didn't you hear? I live here now. I told you what would happen if I ever caught you near my nephew again. Now stay there. Don't make me come looking for you. So you guys moved the nativity? We did. I'm so proud of you, Brian. Now I think maybe you need to go talk to your cousin. I think you're right. So who are you? Maggie. My name is Maggie. He's a good guy. I know. 
You want to help make sure he stays that way? Deal. <laughs> Isn't it great? It's amazing. We really made a difference, didn't we? I mean, look at all these people. We didn't do this. God did this. You're right, Amanda. Hey, everyone. I'm headed over to Emily Carson Park where I plan on playing Christmas carols all day long. And you're all invited. Yay! Especially all the good singers. Come on, let's go. Joy to the world. Happy birthday, Jesus.